The 1930s, when the cult of personality surrounding Joseph Stalin reached a new low. At the end of his speeches, which were long, his doting Communist Party audience would applaud. To encourage adoration, the first person to stop clapping was routinely shot in front of everybody else. This had the effect of prolonging the ovation, but at some cost, the audience would clap until physically spent. People literally passed out, but that didn't save them. The first person to stop applauding the dear leader, even if that meant they'd fainted from fatigue, was also, you guessed it, shot on the spot. Well, the Soviets grew out of this devotion to one individual, but in the one recognisably old-school communist state, still just about hanging on to this vile creed, the cult of personality persists. And in fact, in North Korea, by some measures, it's getting stronger. Kim Jong-un is said to be so certain of his own lights, his own genius, that he will no longer tolerate any state recognition of the efforts to build paradise on Earth made by his father, Kim Jong-il, or his grandfather, Kim Il-sung, who founded the communist state in North Korea. Their pictures have been removed from official buildings in Pyongyang. You can make a reasonable guess as to what happens to anyone who mentions their, their name. Uh, well, Kim Jong-un, who's now 37, is, according to South Korea's spy agency, promoting an ideology which revolves around his thoughts. It's been called Kim Jong-un-ism. Join me now, Christian Whiten, a former diplomat and North Korea expert at the U.S. State Department under the Trump and Bush administrations, now at the Center for the National Interest. Christian, thanks so much for joining us uh, tonight. I'm always slightly uh, awkward about the North Korea stories. It's so easy to treat uh, Kim as a sort of panto villain. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of people are, are being tortured and sometimes starved to death. Exactly right. It's a you know privation across the country, and they always seem to be just one step away from another famine like the one they had in the 90s, where one or two million people may have died. Um, and there are reports about a poor harvest, about farmers being strip searched to make sure they're not concealing anything from their own fields. Um, but it is an interesting development with this cult of personality because his father and grandfather, and incidentally, North Korea is the only communist system ever to have a hereditary succession, uh, and they've actually had two from grandfather to uh, then to uh, Kim Jong-un and uh, or excuse me, Kim Jong-il and now Kim Jong-un um, to sort of downgrade and erase the legacy of his father and grandfather is significant because these people were cast as infallible, as almost godlike in North Korean system where North Koreans at least uh, purported to believe uh, to some degree that um, you know, they would play a, a round of golf and score only an 18, a hole in one on each course and each, um, each hole uh, that they never went to the bathroom and sort of to cast them aside and to elevate yourself, is it's a big deal for North Korea. And I suppose uh, the way I've read it, Christian, is it was a sort of marriage between North Korean culture and communism, because uh, you know far better than most of us that, that, that there seems to be this sort of reverence for the, for the father figure there. And, and, and to, but that, as you say, is at odds with the communist system, which, which doesn't generally reverence the idea of an ancestor. It's a highly centralized, highly paternalistic, if you will, um, system. And in fact, similar to Hitler, actually, and also, frankly, to Stalin, you had very little role, very little public profile for the wife of the dictator. And that has persisted. There's a little bit of a twist with Kim Jong-un, the current dictator, where his sister uh, at times has had a, a bigger public role that waxes and wanes, which is a fair, also fairly common for bigwigs within the North Korean government, where sometimes they will be in favor and included on lists of important um, uh, officials and uh, parts of the bureaucracy, the senior bureaucracy, and other times falling off if they're, they're out of favor. Same was sort of what we were left with in analyzing the Stalin years in the Soviet Union, where you'd look at the May Day Parade and see someone, uh, oh, a little bit closer to Stalin. He's closer to the marshal this year. He must be favored. So uh, that faction is rising. It's, it's sort of trying to analyze a lot from very little information we have from North Korea. Uh, what little information we have, Christian, I mean, sometimes you can derive a lot just from the pictures. I mean, we, we haven't been able to get it on screen, but there was a picture I was looking at in the papers this morning, and you've seen it time and time again. We've seen it many times. He's walking down a, a, a line of, of, of adoring citizens, and some of them, maybe even a majority of them, are literally crying, crying tears of joy at being in the close orbit of their great leader. How do you inspire so much love? 
<laughs> well, it's a whole lot of fear, as you pointed out, as with with Stalin and other cults of personalities, or Mao Zedong and Mao Zedong thought. Um, any sort of off color comment. I mean, you could talk about other dictatorships uh, like the late Soviet Union or Iraq under Saddam or Iran today, but North Korea is fairly unique. That you know, you could be drunk and accidentally make one off color remark about the the dear leader, the great leader, whatever we're calling him this week, and no one will ever hear from you again in some circumstances. Uh, information is so tightly controlled. We beam in Radio Free Asia Korean service, Voice of America Korean service, and some defectors have um, a smaller signal that gets transmitted in. Uh, they try and jam it. Some of it gets through, but if you're North Korean, it's a serious crime to listen to those broadcasts. You might do it under the sheets at night. You might not even tell your own family members you're accessing uh, illegal information. And just a thought on the role of the South Korean intelligence service here. I mean, we're taking them at their word. I mean, if they're saying that he's taking down the pictures of dad and granddad, we, OK, we're believing them. But you can see why, they'd, why they would say this, because it, it creates a little bit of destabilization. It suggests a, a certain monomania on his part. Well, he's already self-evidently a bit of a maniac. Um, but but you, you can see why there's something in it for them. It is, although South Korea's current government is left wing and is, is uh, to an extent pro engagement, has been trying to find a reason to talk to North Korea. Um, you know, previous left leaning governments in South Korea have done this and, and essentially failed. They, you know, one of them created in the 2000s something called the Kaesong Industrial Complex. It was supposed to bring South Korean capital together with North Korean labor. Some of us thought it looked a little bit like slave labor. Really, what it was was a way for North Korea to vacuum South Korean money up and deliver very little in return. Certainly, no liberalization, no opening. Um, and, you know, the ju this is juxtaposed against a desire by the Biden administration to initiate talks with North Korea. North Korea so far has said no to that, probably holding out for a, a good deal. They like to uh, receive goodies before the talks begin. Christian, we're almost out of time. You've got 15 seconds. How does this hideous regime end? Do the Chinese withdraw their patronage? Does something else happen? Revolution from within? What is it? It's hard to say, but, you know, with with that much control of information, more information from the outside can be very destabilizing. So what looks like the perfect dictatorship, you know, might one day come tumbling down.